How to use PEI's Climate Hazard and Risk Information System, CRIS for short. CRIS is an interactive web portal allowing users to learn more about different climate hazards in PEI. CRIS has information for property owners, interested buyers, and decision makers. CRIS helps users find out climate hazard and risk information on particular properties. This video will guide users through the steps to access the site, select map layers, and search for information on a property. While CRIS can be used on any connected device, because of the large amount of data, we recommend using a computer or tablet for the best experience. To begin, using your search bar, type in chris.peiclimate.ca. The launch page will appear. Click the launch button to open the CRIS homepage. CRIS provides information on several climate hazards. For now, we'll look at coastal erosion and flooding. The first drop-down box is the hazard type. Choose the coastal erosion and flooding option. Below that, you'll see the coastal flooding scenario, which look at the potential for flooding in the future. Hover over each option for more information. If you're constructing a new building that will last 80 years, it is good practice to select the 2100 option. Using the drop-down arrow, select the moderate low flood hazard. This represents the extent of the coastal floodplain in 2100. Next, you can select a coastal change period to see the area's erosion rates. Short, medium, and long-term historical change shows how far the coastline has moved and how quickly it happened. Here, we chose the long-term data option of 1968 to 2020. Finally, let's select a coastal change measurement. When we click on Distance, M, the map will show the distance in meters that the coast has changed over the selected time period. Click the Load Map button to update the map to your selections. You can learn more about the other drop-down options by hovering over each option to see a pop-up bubble with more information. Once the maps have loaded, you can then modify the reference layers. Click on the yellow Load Reference Layers button. You will see several options to choose from. As you hover your mouse over each layer, a description will pop up. When you see a plus sign, that means there are subcategories that can be selected from within that layer. To view the layer on the map, scroll and click the white boxes you are interested in. If you pick the white box without clicking the subgroups, the choice will automatically select all the subgroups. Please note, for larger layers such as planning jurisdiction, municipal boundary, and wetland 15-meter buffer zone, these layers may cover up others, so clicking all boxes at once is not recommended. You can control the transparency of layers by dragging the slider next to the layer symbology. For this example, we'll click Coastlines, Wetland 15-meter buffer zone, property boundary, and road network. Having loaded all the layers needed, we can now search for a specific property. To find a property, click on the magnifying glass and type in the location you're searching for. Once you've typed in the name, click on the orange magnifying glass icon again, and the map will zoom to that location. In our example, we will search for Shelton Beach, a provincial property located on the south shore of PEI. Using the button on the bottom right of the screen, we can zoom in for a close-up of the area. If you want to change the base map to make it easier for you to recognize the area, click on the Terrain button. If you click Imagery, this type of map will appear. Since we selected Moderate Low Flood Hazard, we can see the extent of the coastal floodplain in 2100. The legend in the upper right corner shows the projected flood depth with red meaning deeper flood waters and yellow meaning shallower. In our example, the resulting map for Shelton Beach looks like this. You might notice there are small circles along the coastline. If you click on one of these, the historical information will show how that segment of coastline, highlighted in blue, has changed. The rate of how much and how fast it has changed will pop up in a box. A positive number indicates erosion, and a negative number means the area is experiencing a buildup of sand or sediment. These small circles are color-coded based on the amount of coastal change. The corresponding legend is located in the upper right corner of the screen. Chris also shows inland flood maps. Inland flooding is most often caused by intense rainfall. To see the areas of PEI that are most at risk of inland flooding, select Inland Flooding from the Hazard Type drop-down. Inland flooding mapping is provided for all of PEI and looks at the potential for flooding now and in the future. Current climate scenarios are based on historical rainfall. Future scenarios consider climate change based on a business-as-usual emission model. 
If you are constructing a new building that will last 80 years, it is good practice to select the Future Climate 100-year option. Click the Load Map button and the Inland Flood Map will appear. You can use the buttons in the bottom right of the screen to zoom in or search for a particular property. The CRIS platform is designed to be open source and allows for data to be downloaded. You can click on the download button next to each layer to save the data to your computer. You can also click the print button in the bottom right corner to print the map you see on your screen. CRIS contains a variety of additional information not demonstrated in this video. We encourage you to navigate the platform to learn more. If you have further questions on how flooding may impact your property, please contact the government of Prince Edward Island by emailing climateadaptation at gov.pe.ca.